Welcome to Suzanne's studio. I'm Suzanne Barnett, your host, and tonight we are having a very, very important show, and I am so pleased and honored to introduce our guest, Eric Talbert, who is the executive director of Emergency USA. Eric, thank you so much for being here. You have so much to talk about. Oh, we do. Thanks for having me, Suzanne. What is Emergency USA? Emergency USA is the U.S. based affiliate of an international humanitarian organization which was founded in Milan, Italy in 1994. And our mission is to provide high standard, free of charge, health care in war zones and help promote a culture of peace, solidarity and respect for human rights. And how long have you been with this organization? Oh, personally, I got involved almost 10 years ago. Uh, I just started out by volunteering. And how does it make you feel now that you're executive director? And we're going to show some pictures and some film later on. And it's pretty heavy stuff. Tell us. Yeah, it can be. Uh, it's definitely heavy. It's a, facing the harsh realities that our fellow civilians are dealing with every day in war zones around the world. Uh, it can be really overwhelming. But I continue to be inspired by the patients and some of who we'll take a look at later through the film and the photos, knowing that they can overcome the challenges they face uh, to continue to be with their family and live uh, life also gives me hope um, every day. So as the executive director, it's been a really rewarding experience to be able to come from a volunteer. To, well, isn't that usually the way it starts? First you're a volunteer and then you become a big, uh, star, <laughs> if yeah. you can call that. Yeah. Uh, have you, tell us uh, where the, co the countries are mm -hmm. that you deal with. So emergency operates hospitals and clinics um, in Afghanistan, Iraq, Sierra Leone, Sudan, as well as the Central African Republic. Have you been there yourself? I have, I've been to the hospitals and clinics in Sudan, as well as in Sierra Leone. When you see these these uh, children and the relatives, and they're in such terrible shape. How do you how do you deal with that? Yeah, it's it's really difficult. Having become a father recently myself, it's it's really heavy seeing, particularly the children. But, um, but being able to connect with the folks who are there as just a human to human, with the parents in particular, who are there with their children, and knowing that they're gonna be treated with the same standard of care that we would be if I was in San Francisco, we just happened to be in Sierra Leone or, or in Sudan, um, has a sense of, uh, of, of motivation to keep me going and to being able to continue to help provide the staff and the hospital with what they need there in our little way to try to continue to help so they can treat more people because there's no shortage of need for surgical and medical services and knowing that these people are going to be treated with dignity and respect and that they're not going to have to pay a dime for it um, is really how I try to counter the really heavy parts of the work. How are you funded? We're primarily funded through individuals, so we get a lot of donations, and particularly small donations from people all over the country uh, here in the U.S. as part of my role. We have about 1,500 individual donors from the U.S. who give all different ranges of funds, and they're really our, our core and our base and our supporters. We do have some pretty fantastic foundation and, and corporate sponsors, but the bulk of the funds come from those individuals here in the U.S. And how do you advertise, yeah. so to speak? <laughs> Yeah, so you know, through our website, which is www.emergencyusa.org, folks can go there and see hospitals and videos and stories and learn more about our patients and staff who are working in the field in these different areas. Um, and then it's also through um, other uh, media content. There was a, a film last year in 2013, a short documentary called Open Heart, uh, made by a very dedicated team and a very talented director. Um, the name Keith Davidson, and that film was nominated for an Oscar last year. So it helped us significantly raise that the That is, boy, that is an honor. It is. It has honest. it helped a lot? It has. Uh, you know, we've gotten a lot of attention from it, some additional supporters and uh, donors and inquiries. And was, on every level, people see that story, it's such a powerful film, they want to be able to help out other children. So it's been a, a very helpful for us here in the United States. 
And um, I have this I, I would like to read. Sure. What is the importance of health, education, and jobs in post-conflict areas? It's, a, it's a vitally important to communities to be able to have these three main things. Um, a lot of the areas where currently have hospitals are in active war zones like Afghanistan and now again in Iraq. Um, but in areas like Sierra Leone, our hospital was built and started working, uh, providing surgery during the war. But luckily, that war ended soon after we had opened our surgical center. But we continue to stay there and to operate. And we believe you know, health care is a human right. Um, and through our hospitals, we provide not only health care, but this education and jobs. And this yeah. is a three-pronged approach that we think makes the biggest significant impact on the local community. And those education and jobs are also part of our long-term plan to be able to turn these hospitals over to the community so our international folks can go home or maybe go work for another project. But all the education and all the technology and all the medical know-how stays there, and so they're able to maintain that hospital. And Eric, tell how many people you have helped. We're going to see it on the film, but um, I'm so impressed. Tell. Well, since 1994, Emergency has been able to treat over 6 million people. That's unbelievable. Yeah. You must be so proud. Well, you know, oh. Suzanne, it's a, it's a bittersweet number. You know, when I first got involved about 10 years ago, we had just reached over 3 million people. And it's had 10 years since, we're at six, now we're 6 million people now. And it comes out to about a patient every two minutes. <gasps> one so. patient every two minutes. Right. Some place in the world that one of our facilities is getting high quality health care. And how many countries say that again? Uh, since 1994, over 16 countries. 16 countries. No. I think this would be a good time to show the pictures. Great. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's okay. do it. Okay. This is a photo. You see the letters there, OPD, which stands for Outpatient Department. And this is our emergency room in Sierra Leone. And you can see this young father here. I often see myself and this gentleman with his daughter and carrying her there, and you see some other folks who've been treated are coming back for follow-up. So this is in uh, our surgical center in Godrich, which is just south of Freetown in Sierra Leone. And this is the only high standard free of charge surgical center for the entire nation. Uh, so we've seen and have been there for over 12 years, so we've seen and treated a lot of the people in this country. Um, and so this is just a photo to so get, get a sense of what our hospital looks like there and the people who are being treated. Okay, let's see our next one. This is inside, so um, we just, given that the hospital in Sierra Leone was built over 10 years ago, uh, we recently been working to raise funds and support to refurbish the surgical center as well as expand that emergency room. So this is a photo just from last week of inside the new emergency room that just opened. And so this is, you can see here, one of our local medical staff who's being trained and works at the hospital. Um, just doing a checkup on a young boy here with with his mom, and so this is just uh, uh, an important photo for us because it's so much hard work and so many dedicated people have gone into building this new emergency room and expand it to be able to treat more people in Sierra Leone. Can you imagine? Of course, you can. The, the parents of these children that are being helped. Yeah, and that's part of what we added is their hospital. You know, we talk a lot about the surgical and the emergency room, yeah. but we also added a guest house on campus. Really? So when family come, they travel quite distances in rural areas and often will spend quite a bit of money, which they don't have to get there. And so when we get there, you can see in the case here with this young uh, child with his mom, you know, if they're from the rural area, then they can stay at our hospital and, you know, eat in the cafeteria and be able to come and spend time with their family until they're healed and be able to go back home and join their family. So That's it's important. fantastic. Let's see the next one. Uh, this is a, uh, a photo from our hospital in uh, Anaba in Afghanistan, which is just a couple hours north of Kabul. We have a surgical center here, but we also have a surgical center in Kabul. So this is just one of our international nurses here uh, attending to one of the, the kids who have been treated at the hospital. We see a lot of landmine injuries still in Afghanistan. It's just heartbreaking. A lot of these kids accidentally or unknowingly um, are injured this way. But this is a you know this picture also reminds me of the importance of our international staff and part of what we do as Emergency USA is recruitment for physicians, nurses, and surgeons who have experience who want to go and help train those local staff and it's a really committed it's a paid position um, and requires a commitment at least six months from the international side. 
It's just fantastic. I like his red hair better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful let's, smile, too. <laughs> let's see the next one. Oh, I can't believe this. <laughs> Tell about this picture. So next to the, oh. the hospital in Anaba, we've, uh, Emergency has opened an emergen a uh, maternity center. So this is a photo from the maternity center, and these are some, you know, brand new Afghan children who have joined us in the world, and so this is just part of them getting weighed and checked in in the nursery. Oh, I thought they were quintuplets. Oh, no, these are all <laughs> separate. They kind of look alike as babies do when they're young, but yeah. these are all from separate moms who are uh, being treated at a maternity center. Aren't they beautiful? They're so gorgeous, yeah. Isn't that funny? I thought at least they were triplets right there. <laughs> Let's see the next yeah. one. So this is um, our ho one of our hospitals in um, Sudan, and this is the Slam Center for Cardiac Surgery. And this was a hospital that opened in 2007, in particular to treat patients with uh, cardiac issues. And this is often in the area of Sub-Saharan Africa. These are often young children from ages from three up to their teens who get rheumatic heart disease because strep throat goes untreated. So this hospital here is, um, is just south of Khartoum in the Soba village. It looks so modern. Well, that's part of our, our model, Suzanne, is be able to build hospitals that we yeah. would want to take our friends and family to. Yeah, yeah. And this is inside the Slam Center. So you can see one of our, uh, a couple of our, the local nurses who work there in the Sudan tr and attending to one of the patients. Um, looks like she's getting ready to, to go into to surgery here to receive that open heart surgery. Uh, if the valve is too far deteriorated and they can't repair it, they will insert a mechanical valve. Where do you, <coughs> excuse me, mm -hmm. where are, uh, where do you see healthcare headed in the near future? Yeah, this is, you know, cardiac, <coughs> part of the reason we emergency built the slum center was these large unmet surgical needs. And I've seen a, a growing trend within the international community to really take on this issue of surgical capacity. Obviously, this is something Emergency has focused on since 1994. It's really inspiring in, to see other organizations. Of course, there's other folks who've been doing it, but really see the momentum build of these past 10 years that I've been involved and in understanding the importance of surgery because part of what we've seen is if you build a center where you can have surgical treatment, you're able to provide pediatrics, maternity, you know, yeah. these other needs. Yeah. But if you start out trying to just provide uh, vaccinations or low-level care, you never get to surgery. So having that capacity and be able to build down has been really exciting to see. Uh, Eric, this is just an aside question, but are there thousands and thousands of other people in these areas that need attention? There is, yeah, oh. in all of these areas. The, the yeah. needs are massive, and there's a lot yeah. of other organizations working to provide other services, which allows us to focus on surgical capacity. Um, but the ends, uh, you know, there's no shortage of need, uh, and all of our hospitals, often in particular in Afghanistan, are beyond capacity because of the, the need of for course. civilians to be treated. What about people that uh, might resent the fact that you're doing, Emergency USA is doing all of this wonderful work in other countries, but what about ours? Yeah, so from the Emergency USA side, the work that we do here is around human rights advocacy and breaking down these walls of the difference between us and them and really being an active member in the global society and community and to, be under, to have that work to be able to understand that if the roles were reversed, if we had to happen to be born in an area that was being bombed or war, we'd be looking to other people to help us out. Yeah. So we take confidence in that approach and saying we're, we're able to do that and that's our focus. There's tons of other needs, tons of other organizations, but this is our unique focus. Are there other organizations like Emergency USA? There are, from you know, from the healthcare perspective, there's a lot yeah. of people doing some amazing work here in the United States, um, and in different areas of need as well as just for different populations and need. So now, is all of this personnel, the medical, the doctors, the nurses, do they do it free? They don't. All of our international staff are paid. This is our okay. commitment to equality. I right? see. We, these are very highly skilled professionals, people here who are either running their own practice or a chair of a department or have, you know, 
uh, bills and responsibilities here yeah. in the U.S. Yeah. Um, and so they're 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 paid. Uh, they're not paid as much as they would earn here in the U.S. I but it's see. a stipend, yeah. and the organization covers their cost of travel. All their room and board is taken care of, as well as their needs while they're in the field with yeah. us. So. This would be a very good time to show that film. Okay. And it's it's extraordinary. So let's show it. Okay.
is too chilly. Come on. I met you already. <laughs> so late. It's interesting. <clears throat> Do you have any questions? Me and Kudam Sawal do you? Sawal diga. Thank you. Eric, that, I, I just can't believe what I saw. What a film. Yeah, it's, it's pretty intense, and you get to see some of what happens every day, all day in our hospitals around the world from the, the very challenging side of these injuries, particularly the children, but also the hope that these medical staff can are able to provide these people with the, you know, high quality health care with respect and giving them a second chance at, at life and be treated with dignity. And you have children. I do. I have a daughter. And so this must affect you in, it, in a real emotional way, like, God forbid, yeah, your you, daughter. That's right. And I mean, you know, when I got involved, um, I didn't, my daughter wasn't born yet. Um, but having becoming a parent myself has definitely changed my experience and the, the work that I do and how I go about it, I think, you know, for the better. Yeah, how, is there anything in particular that has changed you that you would like to tell us? Um, yeah, it's the, you know, it, it, I think just added another level that parenthood brings to all of life and the ability to, to be present and understand how important uh, children are to the future. Yeah. Right, and so in these areas like Afghanistan, knowing that these children are you know, able to help save quite a few lives at our surgical center also means we're providing, in our small way, a little bit of hope for the future of Afghanistan, because this is the, the world these children are going to inherit, and it's going to be a long challenge, but the fact that they're going to be able to you know, survive these injuries to be a part of that is really inspiring. I'd like to mention the fact that you are the recipient of honors and awards. <laughs> you didn't know I was going to say I that. I did not know. <laughs> and some of these honors and awards, including the San Francisco Bay Area Young Nonprofit Professionals in 2012, the Young Executive Director of the Year Award. So you must be pretty darn good, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> well, I bring a lot of passion to my work, but at the same time, a lot of tried and true techniques. I have a lot of people around me, organizations I'm involved with, that I can learn a lot from, people who've came before me and leverage those opportunities for Emergency USA, having, you know, taking a look at the film. Um, I was, you know, I originally got involved as a volunteer because I heard these stories and I wanted to do something with what little um, resources I had, but with the pr privileges that I knew that I, I existed just by being alive in this country today. Um, and so that's what really inspired me to get involved and do the work that I do. And it's, and it's very humbling to be recognized from different organizations for the, for the work that I do um, in this role. Never expected it, not seeking it, but it's also, it's, it's very well, you're nice. You're very modest, aren't you? Oh. <laughs> you are. Oh, thanks. No, but I, I really am so pleased that I've been able to interview you, really. You're a real humanitarian. Oh, well, thank you, Suzanne. Yeah. I appreciate that. No, no, it's true. and. Um, what do you think the most important aspect of your work is? I mean, there are several things, but what's yeah. the number one thing? You know, for me, I go back to my original involvement in providing this opportunity and space for people who want to help to do so. And, you know, I was very moved by a story uh, I heard very early on about a young man at the time about my age who was injured by a landmine but was treated at the hospital in Kabul and ended up working there 
and provided him and his family with all these opportunities that otherwise wouldn't be there. So I, I from that lesson, go forward and try to provide and the opportunities for other people. As a primary role of Emergency USA, we do that through medical recruitment for people who want to work abroad. Work a lot with uh, volunteers throughout the country. We have local grassroots groups who do human rights advocacy, and of course, with our with our donors. It's a big part of my job and my education is working with um, donors. What What may we do as a regular citizen to help you? Yeah, I think the important thing in the way a lot of folks uh, get stuck uh, in a good way with emergencies, you really see the impact, whether it's a donation of $40 or you go to the website, again, www.emergencyusa.org, and you see some of these pictures. Say that slowly, please. Sure. It's www.emergencyusa.org, mm -hmm. O-R-G. And that's the website, and they can find out more about how to apply, how to volunteer, how to donate if they want to provide some financial support to these hospitals to help save more lives. Because I think just to be able to donate would make certainly make me feel better. It's how I got started. I asked, <laughs> <laughs> I asked what I could do, and they said, you know, the number one thing you could do right now would be most helpful would be make a donation. So I took the forty dollars out of my pocket, made a donation, and said, what's next? What else can I do? And you did. You must have been born this way, right? <laughs> oh, it has a lot to do with the way my mom raised me, yeah. Really? Yeah. We didn't get into that. Thank you so Thank you, much. Thank you, Suzanne. Appreciate You've it. You've been such a good guest. And uh, all I can say is that I only wish you the best of health. Likewise. Thank you. And that you continue on this wonderful path, really. And I hope we could get other people like you. Oh, well. Well, that's not possible, but similar. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Suzanne. It was a pleasure. My pleasure. And I, oh, this is so important, Eric. I have a really hot, cool crew. I just can't get used to that word, cool. I always say hot. But our crew is, is wonderful. You know, if we, if we didn't have KMVT and, and all these wonderful people, we'd never be able to do shows, which is the most important thing in my life. And of course, I would like to thank my audience for watching, and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>